What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 17th iOS 10 jailbreak update video. We have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the iPhone 7 jailbreak, iOS 10.3 and why that could be the next firmware that hackers and hacker groups target, AppSync, City Eraser, and more. Before we get started, I do just wanna thank everybody that came out to the live stream on Friday night. It was a good time. So if you guys don't know, I live stream here on YouTube every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for about two hours and we talk jailbreak, rumors, tweaks, Q&A, all kinds of fun stuff. So if you haven't come out yet, make sure to come out this Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's gonna be really fun. And also, yes, I was featured on Scarce's video last night for the shooting incident that actually happened when I was shooting my top themes video. So it was kind of cool to see myself on Scarce's channel, but you know, it's kind of for all the wrong reasons. I can't really be, you know, too happy about that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into what you clicked on this video for. So first of all, we have no new information about the iPhone 7 jailbreak on 10.1.1. It's still unstable. You still have to use the mock portal beta three, which is at the very bottom of Luca Tedesco's website. That's the only way to jailbreak right now. There's no stable release. And we don't really have any kind of ETA at this point. So as you know, that beta three of the mock portal jailbreak is unstable and it does not come with Sidious Substrate enabled by default, which is why I believe you should just wait for the public version, the final release of Yalu 10.2, which will include stable support for the iPhone 7 on 10.1.1. And especially if you've waited this long, you may as well just wait, you know, another couple weeks, month, whenever it is, you may as well just continue to wait just to make sure you can actually jailbreak your device. You don't wanna be that guy that messes up his jailbreak a day before the public release comes out and then you kick yourself for not waiting. Now, as for the current public version of iOS, which is iOS 10.2.1, I do not think a jailbreak is coming for 10.2.1 whatsoever for any device or from any kind of team because I feel like the next firmware that hackers and hacker groups are gonna be targeting is iOS 10.3. And I touched on this on my live stream a little bit on Friday, but I wanna talk about it again in this video. So I feel like the hackers and hacker groups will be targeting 10.3 because of Apple's new file system that was introduced with the firmware. Now I know that modern jailbreaks actually target the kernel, but I still feel like this new file system will open up new vulnerabilities and exploits for these hackers and hacker groups and it will almost be like motivation you know they'll be like i want to be the first one to pwn this new file system and i even feel like this motivation may bring back some of the og hackers even if they don't release anything for the public i feel like it could bring back some of the og hackers you know like comex or somebody like that just so they can say they pwned you know this new file system that's never been done before so it sounds all good and fun in theory but again this is all just theory that's what i hope for it's what i can actually envision but i don't know for sure of course because i'm not you know a security research expert i don't really know you know what's exactly going on with the file system and how much that would actually impact jailbreaking. And even if there was a jailbreak, it would come after the public final version of iOS 10.3 gets released. And you know, that's a few months away at least. So we probably won't hear anything about the iOS 10.3 jailbreak for a while. Now let's switch the subject a little bit to AppSync, which I've been getting a ton of questions on ever since the jailbreak was released. So as you guys already know, AppSync caused a ton of boot loops. About 90% of people that installed AppSync went into an unfixable boot loop and they had to restore store and now they're not able to jailbreak anymore. Well now, just as of earlier today, Karen actually updated the package inside of Cydia and now it is fully compatible with iOS 10. Now this is important, make sure you download it from Karen's repo only. Nobody else's, make sure to only download it from Karen's repo. I will have that repo down in the description below. And also if you're interested, I will have a link down below where Karen explains why AppSync caused the boot loop when it was first released and kind of an explanation of what's changed. Now another application in Cydia that a lot of people have been wondering about is Cydia Eraser. And Eraser allows you to fully restore your device while maintaining the current version you're on. So that means if I were to use Cydia Eraser now, I could restore my phone as a brand new phone and still be on iOS 10.2. Now ever since the first iOS 10 mock portal jailbreak, Sorok has said that he does plan on making City Eraser compatible with iOS 10, it's just not really high on his priority list. So I'd imagine he's waiting until at least the final release of the Yalu jailbreak, which again, should be soon, but we really don't know with Luca. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the CPP62 error that some of you, a lot of you actually have been getting when trying to sideload anything, not just Yalu, any kind of application through City Impactor. So the CPP62 error usually means that Apple servers are down, but I've been checking and every time people have this issue and I've had this issue, Apple servers are completely fine. They're all green, all systems go. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but all I can say and what's worked for everybody else is just to keep trying. And if it doesn't work, try disabling Find My iPhone and just keep trying. Like I said, some people say it takes over 20 tries to actually get the application on your device. I'm sure Sorok will push out an Impactor update soon that will fix this, 
But until then, all we have to do is just keep trying. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you're anticipating an iOS 10.3 jailbreak. I know I am. I'm really excited because, like I said, I really think there's more motivation with that firmware than ever before just because of the whole new file system and everything like that. So make sure to give a thumbs up if you're excited for that like I am. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.